OK, so we've seen that most of the trouble with space junk is something small hitting something yep. big. But while that's probably most collisions, the most dangerous collisions are where two big things hit, like two actual satellites, because that not only destroys both satellites, but then creates lots of small bits of debris that can then go on and damage other things. Exactly. And believe it or not, we have seen at least one satellite collision in space. There's believed to have been a few more close calls. Uh, and this is a good example. So this is a impact from 2009. There is an Iridium satellite phone company uh, and a Russian Cosmos satellite. Now the Russian Cosmos satellite went defunct. They ran out of fuel. It was a broken satellite. They couldn't control it anymore. But it's still going around in orbit. Now the Iridium satellite was still working. They knew where it was and they were able to track it. The problem was it was knowing in time that these two things were collide, and that's what they didn't have. So here's how it happened. So we had the Cosmos satellite coming at a, essentially a right angle in orbit to the Iridium satellite. They are, ended up being in the same height and roughly at the same altitude, which means that as they were, as the Iridium satellite was going this way, the Russian satellite was going this way, well, it turned out they were gonna be at the same spot at the same time. And so this is what it looks like. So pre-collision, we have the Cosmos satellite coming around. We have the Iridium satellite here. Now, in theory, the orbit should have kept going. So the Cosmos satellite would have kept going like this, the Iridium satellite like that. But they collided. Now, 20 minutes after the collision, this is the cataloged bits of junk that strewed. So here's our satellite coming this way and this way. Now we have this debris field that's gone around. And it's now, as, he, as we talked about before, it's starting to spread out. But both satellites are spreading out. So it's not like they collide and they stay in one spot, mm -hmm. right? They still have their energy. They still have their speed of momentum. So it's still carrying them in that vague direction. Yes. I mean, these speeds are enormous. So you imagine them going through and both blowing into clouds of debris, but the two clouds of debris more or less continuing in the same direction the original spacecraft was going in. Exactly. So you now don't have two satellites. You now have to streams or clouds of satellites. And over time, you get more bits that are actually created because they collide. So this is 50 minutes. So now you have an entire stream that is spread out that is going across. So the bits break up, they create more bits, they can break into more bits as well. But they can also then slowly, you know, some of them, it may end up traveling a little bit slower or faster, they get dragged a little bit down or up. So now it's not just here, it's you get spread this way and this way, well, in every direction because it's space. And, and as you said before, this is one of the, the big worries we have. Yes, we worry about the small bits, but the big bits now have created, we think, at least 10,000 pieces of debris from this one single collision. And you can actually see that this is the impact um, of the Iridium satellite. So. Um, at different times, it was taken over the course of a few seconds. And then you can actually see, here's the satellite as a nice point. You can start to see it being tumbling and changed. And so it's now spinning uncontrolled and breaking in part and fragmenting. So it doesn't shatter, but they can. It really depends on how the collision happens. So this is why there's so much work that goes into understanding these collisions, because whether it hits head on or the side will really depend on how much debris is created, where the debris is, and the volume of it. And if we look at the long-lasting impacts of this, so this is, again, is how much junk of there is versus height. These satellites were originally at 786 kilometers when they impacted. But now you can see here in an actual another satellite that has broken up more recently in a not too dissimilar orbit, you, you notice the debris has spread out. Over time, as you said, the debris slowly changes. And this becomes the problem. So not only do you now does this stream, but every time it goes around, it changes a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, if you all stayed more. at 790 kilometers, you just put your orbit at 770 or 7, 200, 850 or something. And be fine. And you're fine. But because it's spreading out, because of your tidal forces and atmospheric drag and all the other effects, that's uh, not so safe. It, it is not. And, it's just, and it just gets worse and worse over time. And in fact, when we look at what we call these fragmentation events, so these are events in space where stuff breaks apart, satellite collisions, um, accidental knocking, micrometeorites hitting a satellite, because that does happen as well, that still can break it up. We can see here the different types. So here, 
um, from the 60s to today, there's been a big jump in the number of events. So this isn't how much is produced, this is how many times it's occurring. So in five years, this has occurred 60, 70 times. So this is a lot of instances where sometimes it's because the propulsion system doesn't work, sometimes it's an accident, we don't know, electrical faults, you know, the same reason we get accidents on Earth it still happens in space, but now you're producing thousands of pieces of debris every single time. So this is this weird position now. Yes, we worry about the small satellites and we can find the big satellites, but as we big launch more satellites, the rate of these fragmentation events is more likely to occur, which produces more of the small bits, which runs into this vicious cycle, Kessler syndrome.